As many of you may be aware, today is Canada Day. And on this day, we celebrate the day that we didn't get independence. All kidding aside, I was taking a look back at the past year since the last, uh, since the last Canada Day and looking at everything that's happened in the country since then under the glorious Fuhrer Harper. And I've ref somewhat reflected upon our relationship with the United States, our relationship with the UK, and oddly, our relationship with China. And I gotta say, I'm not particularly happy with it. There's been a lot of stuff that's been going on the last couple months, not the last couple months, the last year or so, where it seems like our sovereignty is slowly eroding every single day. You know, as time goes on, U.S. oil companies just have more and more power in our country, and our indigenous population gets worse and worse and worse because of it. More native lands are being destroyed. And when I mean destroyed, I mean physically actually destroyed like so we've, uh, a lot of people who do follow this have seen the, the flames coming out of the tap thing uh, you know the oil gas and all that and it just it just gives me pause to think about remembering Harper standing up and giving speeches on the end of the whatever anniversary of the war of 1812, you know, like, like hundred years, and thinking about how just all that pomp about how we're the best country in the world and pushing all the jingoist BS, trying to say how we were so great because we survived the American onslaught and we maintained our independence from the U.S. While at the same time, he's just completely selling us out to them. How they're just, through, through economic means, we're just getting sold right down the river to U.S. interests. And just reflecting upon that and thinking about it. And of course, since this is Canada Day, one of the things we're supposed to celebrate is our unique identity as Canadians. And one of those things that we used to have, although in a very limited capacity that we ever had it, was our identity as the world's peacekeepers. Meaning how we didn't go out and start wars. We went, we did peacekeeping missions. Okay, we're only here to make sure things stay peaceful and that they don't break out into wars. And you know, we're not here to tell you how to live. We're just here to keep the peace. And how, while that image was always false, you know, we are an imperialist power. We've been an imperialist power for quite some time now. Now, we, we got that reputation from our refusal to be a part of the Vietnam War. Although Canada did uh, make a lot of money off of that war. I believe Canada made about $2 billion off of that war. A lot of the things that were used uh, for by U.S. forces were actually manufactured in Canada, including uh, TNT, which was actually made in Quebec, I believe, uh, if my memory serves me correctly, it was from a factory in Montreal. But anywhere from liquor to radios to batteries, all kinds of stuff was manufactured in Canada for the uh, U.S. war machine. And then after that war, we got that our refusal to actively participate in that war. We got this um, glimmer around us that we're police keepers, not the world's enforcers like the U.S. is. And that's false. I mean, we've taken plenty of imperialist actions ourselves when we've felt like it was really worth our limited resources to go in and do it. Uh, most notably uh, in the Haitian coup in 2004 and obviously the imperialist invasion of Afghanistan. But it's specifically Afghanistan I wanted to talk about. It seems that no matter how much time goes on, the liberal seed of Canada just never leaves us it never it never does it it's just infuriating how this liberalism like will just not leave us as canadians we will get mad to the point where 77 percent of the country will oppose the war in afghanistan 
but not even 5% of the country will do anything about it. I mean, I know there's the usual, you know, anti-war people won't step up and do anything more than being useless hippies, but I mean, Canada, we're really, really bad for that. Is we are really, really liberal on that kind of stuff. And I was just reminded about that old... I, I saw somebody wearing that old t-shirt that says, if you don't stand behind the troops, feel free to stand in front of them. And I just note, just thought to myself, think about all those useless little liberals running around saying that the war is wrong, the war is wrong, but they still support the troops. And that's their mentality. We don't you know, really want to do anything. We don't really want to call them on their illegal war, that they're agreeing to go, with, go on with the illegal, immoral, blah, blah, blah. But yet the troops themselves, with that mentality, if you don't support us, we're going to threaten you. Of course, this isn't like a literal threat that we're going to come out here and kill you, but it's there underneath the surface. And while it's not an implicit threat, that is their mentality. That is what they're really thinking. That we, as the, their mentality of we are the, are the protectors of Canada, are literally thinking in our minds that if you don't support us, so we're going to kill you. Or that you're a traitor and that you're not one of us. Dot, dot, dot. This is the real mentality they have. This really is the way that they think. And that's disturbing. When you think that the only real force we have against this is 77% of the population that's against it but won't do anything. And those who are against it and will go to a protest keep worshipping the people that are committing the same crime that we're supposed to be against. Now I know it's pretty much common fare now that whenever there's some kind of holiday somebody makes a video saying how it's not really something to be celebrated and then uses that as a criticism for whatever that day happens to be. For example, Canada Day. I could mention our eroding sovereignty uh, our eroding democracy, uh, the war in Afghanistan, and stuff like that. But although that's almost a cliche now to do that, I think it's still important that we point these things out and that we really, really take a look at ourselves as Canadians and see what it is that we're doing. And maybe rethink this whole false concept, this social, struct, social construct that is being Canadian.